Okay, next we're going to look at 1 over sine of x, or 1 over sine of theta. Again, it doesn't matter, we'll write theta this time. How can we simplify this? Well, it turns out it's going to be a very similar proof that we looked at before. 1 over sine of theta. Now, if you recall, the definition of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to replace sine with its definition for the first step of the proof. So now we have 1 over opposite over hypotenuse. The next thing we're going to do is flip O and H and multiply that. Why? Because when you divide by a fraction, you keep the top and you multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. That's what happens when you divide fractions. So now we have 1 times H over O. 1 times H is H, which again stands for hypotenuse. The bottom remains O for opposite. And if you recall, hypotenuse over opposite, that is the definition of cosecant. So this is much like the first proof that we just did. We've just proven that 1 over sine of theta is equal to cosecant of theta. Again, if you don't remember these, okay, if you don't remember these identities, you can always remember to just replace sine with O over H and go from there. So that's it for this one. It's a quick video. 1 over sine of theta is equal to cosecant of theta.